So that leads me to talk about glyph scripting and automation, and then we'll run that script to create that FFD box. So glyph scripting has been around for a while. It's been, a gra been around since GridGen. Uh, with GridGen, the, the uh, original version of our software, it was kind of uh, added afterwards, so there wasn't as much functionality there. With PointWise, it's uh, a pretty integral component to the software because PointWise runs in two threads, the GUI and the core, and they communicate through Glyph. And uh, what that means is two things. One, that means everything you can do in PointWise you can do through the scripting language, which is fantastic. Two, that means it's always uh, tested. It's very robust. Every time you do something in PointWise, it's executing a script command um, to call the core. So that's also a really good thing. Um, Here's some just example images of scripts that have been created recently. Um, I'm going to run a couple of them. Uh, scripts are usually created to do all sorts of things from small tasks like I was demonstrating to set the optimal dimension of connectors um, to diagonalizing domains to meshing. For example, in this one, the terrain for wind turbine siting automatically. Um, meshing uh, aircraft automatically. We've generated scripts to mesh, um, uh, like for example, the uh, CRM geometry automatically. If you head over to pointwise.com slash glyph2, you'll get the band pages for our glyph scripting language. Um, it's organized in an object-oriented structure uh, where you have classes uh, uh, prepended with pw colon colon. Um, you've got the inheritance, the methods, the defaults that you can set, and any instance actions that you can perform uh, for that given object. Pointwise, uh, when you run pointwise, you'll notice there's this noun-verb paradigm way of doing things, and that's directly uh, mirrored in the scripting language with objects and actions. Uh, you pick an object and you apply some action to it. Uh, the same goes for the scripting language. It's based on Tickle TK, uh, which has been around for a while. Uh, when we adopted this language, it was one of the most popular scripting languages out there. That has since changed, but it's still uh, very robust. It's cross-platform. It's open. Um, and uh, it comes with uh, TK, which is a GUI toolkit, and you have access to widgets for creating nice custom user interfaces. So the FFD script, I think, is going to be really useful for you guys. We talked about it during our last webinar a little bit, and uh, it was put together to create these FFD boxes and write out the data in a format that you can use with your uh, grid file. It basically writes it to a .su2 file that you can then concatenate with your, your mesh. Um, it used to be that uh, creating these boxes was a little bit tedious, um, maybe having to go back to a CAD tool or something to, to get a sense for how large these things need to be, where they needed to be, and now we can create them based off of extents of uh, entities in pointwise itself, both, both in 2D and in 3D. So I'm going to demonstrate that. Not yet. <laughs> I'm going to demonstrate that uh, for you here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an FFD box for the spinner. To do that, I'm going to grab the domains. And this process is going to be the same for any type of FFD box you create using this script. So I'm going to grab those domains, and I'm going to create a group. I'm going to call it FFD-spinner. And so the first FFD means that this is going to be identifying it as an FFD group. Spinner is the name of that group or the name of that FFD box. The next uh, parameter it's looking for is the size of the FFD box relative to the extents of the geometry. So for example, in the X direction, I want it to be the same size as the geometry. In the Y, maybe 20% larger. In the Z, it's 20% larger. The last one are the polynomial degrees for the FFD box. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set those all to 3 and click OK. So now I have this group, which I call an FFD group. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this script, and it's going to identify any of these FFD groups as long as, they're, uh, as long as they start with FFD, and it's going to convert them to what I call FFD layers. So I'm going to run that script. It's created a box. If I go to the Layers tab, it's created a layer. And the nice thing about this is I can toggle it on and off. So we didn't talk about layers at all, but basically what layers do is allow you to organize your grid or your geometry. They're very useful. Um, but yeah, I can toggle these things on and off. If I had a lot living in the display at once, I may want to toggle some of them on and off and that sort of thing. Um, what this is, if I highlight it, 
is it's just a structured block. It has the IJ, uh, de IJK degree that I specified. Um, it's basically just a structured block that provides all the data I need to create an FFD box. Basically the, the, the order as well as the corner points. Okay? But sometimes you may want to uh, you may want to change its size. So let's uh, let's change its size. Let's make it a little bit longer. Okay. One of the things that I do is I create. If I uh, just isolate that, I create. You see all those points in there, database points, kind of at all the midpoints of the connectors, the center of the faces, and that sort of the center of the block. And you can use those as anchors for different types of transformations. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stretch this. So I'll grab the block. I will go edit, transform, stretch. I'm going to pick the corner points. Let's say I want to just stretch it in the uh, body X direction, and I can kind of stretch it however large that I want it to be. Okay. And maybe once I'm satisfied with that, it's like, OK, that's what I want my FFD box to look like. All I have to do is run the script one more time. It's going to first check that all of the groups have been converted to layers first. Once it's done that, if it says, OK, all FFD groups have been converted to FFD layers, I'm now going to export that. And so at this point, everything was already converted to a layer. It's now exported that. It also gives you a chance to modify it if you wanted to. Um, so now, if I go into the directory where the script was, it basically creates a document called ffd.su2 that has all the information that you need that you can simply append to the .su2 grid. Okay, so that's how that works. So we're done in this particular case. We basically went start to finish over the last hour and uh, hour and a half for this geometry, um, cleaning it up, creating the service mesh, creating the volume mesh, running a few scripts on it. Um, the last thing that I wanted to talk about was um, some more of the scripting stuff just before we left off. So what I'll do is I'm just going to uh, blow that mesh away. And one of the things I wanted to show you was I often get the question, I'm new to scripting, what can I do to get started? I want to automate the meshing for this particular application. Um, one of the best places to go is obviously the man pages that I mentioned before, the Tickle TK website to get familiar with Tickle syntax. The other thing you can do to get familiar with Glyph, which I really like, is uh, if you go to, you can either from the script menu you can journal, so I can do certain operations and journal them to a file, and I can look at the the output. It's really verbose, um, so it's nice to use that as a, as a, as Brennan said, inspiration. Um, not to use it, uh, copy paste it. The other thing I can do is just in the message window I can turn on journaling by just right clicking and go journal and so now it's like well what's the command that I need to create a connector? Well let's just create a connector. Well, that's a database curve but at least you get the point. Uh, it, it outputs the, uh, the scripting code to create that entity. So I can then take this and I can use that to help write a, a procedure for creating uh, database lines, for example. So this is a really great way to get used to scripting uh, and start uh, and start going for it. Is, is the journaling happening always, even if you're not showing it? Yep, exactly. Yes, the journaling is happening always. So I'm going to turn that off. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to show was uh, from the first day, we had created a mesh for an airfoil. And uh, it was simple enough that um, it could be scripted. And in fact, it has been. You can download the script off the script exchange. It's a great example because not only is it really simple, but there's a GUI on it. And you can see how that GUI was constructed. Um, so for example, I want to do the same thing. I'm going to create an ACA 0012. I've got my cell height, my growth rates. My boundary layer height, 125, click mesh. And there's the, the grid that we created yesterday during the quick start. So you can see what scripting can, can do for you and automate that entire process. So and I, I, don't, I was hesitating whether I should show you guys any syntax uh, for the script. Obviously, you saw some of it in the message window, but maybe the best 
uh, place to go, uh, since we're running a little bit short on time, is our GitHub page. You can look at all of our scripts. Uh, same thing goes, I mean, if you want to modify any of those, just fork them, modify them, submit a pull request, uh, we'll take a look at it, and then we can improve our scripts, obviously, with the help of, uh, of you guys. If you write any cool scripts that you want to provide, you can submit them to us, and we'll upload them to our, our GitHub page as well. So we've done that in the past. So with that, um, I'm kind of at the end here. So I just want to say thank you guys very much, um, both uh, attending on-site and off-site. Uh, appreciate you guys uh, watching. Um, I think there was a lot of great material here. Um, one of the things I'm going to plug our uh, user group meeting. I've mentioned this a couple of times. There's some going to be there's going to be some really uh, really exciting stuff uh, that we're going to be showing off at these user group meetings, especially um, if you're interested to see where PointWise is going in the future. I kind of I didn't want to give too much of that away here. Um, I think this is a great forum for it. Um, if you can make it, it's in Anaheim, California, and there's still some time to register for that. Um, again, my name is Travis. Um, you can take down my contact information if you want um, and contact me afterward with any questions that didn't get answered. Uh, John Dries is also here. He's uh, on our uh, technical support team. You can also contact him as well. And as always, we're, we're really big into social media, too, so you can follow us anywhere you want. YouTube, we have a blog, Another Fine Mesh, which is really popular, GitHub, Twitter, Facebook, and uh, everything in between. So. Are there any questions before? There was one from online that, okay. that we, if you don't have the meshes anymore, we can probably just answer it. But they, uh, Payam asked, could you show converting T-Rex uh, to prisms for the case you were working on? Uh, um, how I, do you do that? Well, I have the picture. Um, that's what it would look like. To convert it, it's just, yeah, on export, checking the box, basically, like, like you had mentioned. But there's also an option within the drop-downs now in one of the menus where you can just do it before you even export it. Um, let me, true or? no, that, that's, that's actually a little bit different. So, yeah, the question is about how you would go about recombining or combining those elements into prisms. Uh, I think what, uh, what you're talking about is convert T-Rex to prisms. Yeah. yeah. So that will convert full layers of... Uh, those into full layers of prisms. So if it's if it's not a full layer, it won't convert it. And so that's why we kind of recommend doing it on export. So if you take this and you export the mesh, you'll get a little checkbox, and you can toggle that on and uh, combine. Other questions in the room? We got a Is there a release date for 17.3? No, there's not. But we are going to be uh, doing some training with that at the user group. What's new? Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's new in it, actually. Um, we, we've been working on some overset, um, overset work, uh, which I talked a little bit about yesterday, kind of bringing in um, some of the, uh, integrating with some really popular overset grid assembly tools. Um, and so that's the sort of stuff you can kind of expect from PointWise moving forward, as well as some, uh, we've talked about this before, things like mixed element support, um, you know, different element types, things like that. Yeah, so the question was about consulting and helping um, with generating meshes. Yeah, there's a couple of ways that we can go about that. Um, if you're a customer, you're in contact with our technical support, so they can definitely give you feedback on your meshes and offer some assistance. Um, if you'd like us to just create a mesh for you, um, we there's a his name is Nick Wyman. He's the director of applied research, um, and sometimes he gets help from uh, other people in the department to uh, to create meshes for clients, and and he has uh, some specific rates for for doing that. Um, the question was about the presentations. Uh, the presentation that I used, as you noted, there's not a lot of uh, words there, so on its own it probably won't make much sense, so I'm not going to be making it available online. If, uh, if somebody watches the video and they, they would like to have it, you can always contact me. Um, I left my card here. I flashed my, uh, my, um, my email address on the screen. You can always contact me and I'll send it to you.
But as far as yeah, SU, I'll say more about that in just a second when we wrap up. Yeah. Any other questions in the room? Yeah, uh, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. So I have uh, like kind of an ancient legacy Fortran code that generates meshes, right? And it's it's okay, but you have to keep running it over and over to tweak the parameters. So I wonder, suppose I wanted to write a glyph script that was going to wrap this code and show me the display in pointwise. Mm -hmm. Do you have any recommendations about how to start something like that? Do you, yeah, so the question was, I have a, a code to uh, create a mesh, and I would like to wrap that in a glyph script so I could I see that mesh and identify any problems in pointwise. And my first question to you would be, what's the format that you can output? Is that really arbitrary? Can you output kind it's, of any format? It's, it's plot three. It's plot three. Okay. So yeah, you could use um, our scripting language to wrap that executable. So you could call that, generate the mesh, and then we can import plot 3D files. You could look at it. You can even do the examining directly within the script if you wanted to. So you could say, um, report to me how many elements are over you know, this degree, that sort of thing, and try to identify those problems. Any other thoughts in the room? Yeah, I, I've got one more. Okay. So you're, you're talking about um, overset meshes. Is there a plan to bring a hole cutter into pointwise? Uh, the question was about overset meshing and the hole cutter. Um, the way that's going to work is uh, we've worked with um, Sugar++ and Pegasus 5, and you'll basically be able to call those directly from within pointwise. <laughs> so you'll still, for example, Sugar++, uh, Ralph Noex code, you'd have to have a license to run that, um, and then you would just tell it where it is, you would call that hole cutter. Pegasus 5, I guess you can use if you're in the US, and uh, you could do the same thing for that. You'd have that executable and you'd call it from a point wise. <coughs> yes? Um, the question was client server for uh, Pegasus um, and overset meshing, and I, I believe, yes, you'll be able to, to do that as well. John, do you have any information about, any more information about that? Well, the way this is testing this is actually yeah. yeah. I think an easy one from online. Uh, is there a way to hide the far field mesh so you don't have the lines through the view? The purple lines? <laughs> yeah. Um, I can just, uh, actually, I think I already have this thing layered up. Um, I just put all the surface mesh in a layer and isolate it. So now it's not, uh, not showing the purple lines anymore. Can I ask another one about visualization? If you want to make, I, I like to make pictures, and you guys make a bunch of beautiful pictures. Do you do those in point-wise? Can you just export the some, images? How do you make all these beautiful yeah, images? Some of the pictures we make in point-wise, some of them we use uh, post-processing tools. Um, some of the ones that I showed were done, like the, the recombined elements. We, we can't display those in point-wise yet. Um, soon. OK. <laughs> At some point, we will. More teasers. Uh, <laughs> more teasers. Um, but, uh, yeah, you can uh, you can look at the non-recombined meshes in pointwise, and then you can export that and uh, look at it in a post processor. Is the overset is that basically the last capability for bridging? It's not pointwise yet, or is there other stuff that's still been imported? The question was, uh, what other stuff hasn't been ported from Gridgen into pointwise? Um, was the overset the last thing? Um, I think overset was one of the last big things. I think there's still some small little features that are still floating around that people encounter that haven't been ported over yet. Um, but yeah, I think that might be the last big thing. It used to be T-Rex for a while was the one of the big features that wasn't ported over, but now that's, it's been in point wise for a while and so a lot more mature. Yeah. Okay. Well, I do want to thank Travis and John for traveling over here one more time and putting together some great material, so thanks a lot, guys. Along with that, folks online, thank you for tuning in, asking some great questions. And for the folks in the room, a few of you traveled, we have a good handful of folks here from, from industry. And